Safety precautions were taken during the making of this video to minimize the risk of COVID-19 transmissions among volunteers and staff involved in this project. Please note that the primary presenter may be unmasked. This allows the speaker's voice to be more clearly heard and understood. All others involved in this production and in proximity are masked and taking all necessary precautions. All tools being presented have been sanitized for the safety of the presentation and team. During this presentation, brand names of products may be visible or mentioned. This is in no way an endorsement of any merchandise. The products shown and the discussions surrounding them are for the informational purposes only and not to be construed in a positive or negative context. Hello and welcome to the Williamsburg Botanical Garden. This wonderful environment is managed and maintained by a diverse group of volunteers who care deeply for the plants, the trees, and the beautiful grounds that support a multitude of nature's beautiful species. We are so fortunate to be able to use this special location in this video that will follow to show you all of our beautiful pruning way. Hi, my name is Harry Fall. I have been a master gardener for about three years. Uh, this year, I've been asked to take the lead on our pruning clinic project. Unfortunately, because of the COVID pandemic, we're not allowed to go to people's houses and teach them hand-to-hand, -hand, face to face how to do pruning. So we've elected as a team, all the people you've met, uh, as a team to produce three videos. And I'm proud to be part of that team and I'm proud to be working with the Master Gardeners out here. This is a very good example of your branch collar and bark ridge. These circular grooves, uh, they're actually called the branch collar. Residing in here, all your healing enzymes, your meristem cells, etc. And when you cut a limb off, as this one has just been recently cut, all of these healing agents in here rush to this cut and they actually begin to seal it. They seal it against moisture, they seal it against insects, and they seal it against uh, pathogens that might be flying through the air causing disease. So. You notice here, when the cut was made, it was made just outside of that branch collar. You don't want to even nick this or it's not going to heal properly. Now, adjacent to that, this is called the bark ridge. The bark ridge is where this limb attaches to this main stem, main limb. So this bark ridge, again, uh, this is the attachment point. You would also don't want to cut into this by cutting it. So if you took this and made an improper cut and cut it like this, which I've seen people do in the past, now you're cut, you've cut away your healing agents in the branch collar and you cut away the strength of the joint in the bark ridge. So this remains intact and this all remains intact. Branch collar, bark ridge. What I, I keep on mentioning the fact that we have to cut outside that branch collar so it seals. As the, over the time, those enzymes uh, had sealed the inside of that cut right here, but over time, the bark starts to create a callus around that cut, and that actually is called callus wood. And eventually, it will close up completely. This is a really good cut, but I'm going to point to this one. Did you notice how much? less callus wood is at the top versus all the rest of the way around. Why did that happen? It happened because as they started their cut, it was too close and they nicked the branch collar. All it takes is a slight nick in that branch collar and it's not going to heal and, and, and grow quite as, uh, as efficiently as the rest of it did here. This is what you want to see right here, right here. That's a perfect heal. What we're going to do on this particular shot is a thinning cut. Thinning cut is when you take the branch or the stem back to its source. It will not regrow from that source. Generally when you do a thinning cut, that is the end of that growth pattern. So what she has here, what Kim has, is our pruning shear with the cutting blade on the bottom so we can get it close to the branch uh, bark ridge and the branch collar. And I'll explain that in a few moments. The, the fixed part is at the top. Now she's gonna go ahead and make this cut, go ahead, snip and you can see number one we have a nice angle on it 
This is not going to rot back now. This is going to seal quickly and this branch will remain healthy because of the type of cut that she made. We're going to make another thinning cut right now, but first I want to introduce you to the tool that's most widely used in the pruning world. This is a bypass pruner. A bypass pruner is both blades move and one blade passes by the other. This will give you one of the smoothest cuts you can get in pruning, providing you use the right size tool for the right size branch. Anything larger than a half to five eighths of an branch, inch branch with this, you need a larger pruner. Anything under five eighths to a half, this is fine. But this makes a nice clean cut because one blade passes by the other. So we're going to take this tool now, it's called a bypass pruner, and we're going to make another thinning cut. So what I want to do is put my pruning shear outside that branch collar by roughly a quarter of an inch or so. We don't even want to nick it, and again, I'll point that out later. So my pruning shear is coming up in, and I always want you to look. Can you prune and get closer to the branch collar with your cutting blade? Or, so you can you turn your pruner this way, or this way. In this particular case, because this is narrower, I'm able to get it up in there and just outside the branch collar and we'll go ahead and make this cut. So right now, since I made that cut, all of these enzymes are dashing into this little area and they're going to seal this end of this off to keep insects, disease, and other nasty things from entering this particular limb. Now we're going to make another thinning cut on a branch that is uh, kind of going in a different direction and into our path. But for today, we're just going to demonstrate a thinning cut. We're going to take this particular branch here all the way back to its, its original source. So again, we want to look at the branch collar. And we want to try to look at how with our blade, what would be the cleanest cut to get. Sometimes it may be this way at this angle, but for me and, and where I'm standing today, I'm going to go here. I'm going to look for my branch collar and I'm just going to make a nice, quick, clean I'm going to show you a second demonstration of a thinning cut. And again, I'm going to look for the branch collar, look at which angle might be the best clean cut that I can get. I want to take this branch off at the source of its original limb. So we're going to come in here, look at the branch collar, take a little cut right here, and cleanly cut the branch off. Let's talk about the apical bud, or the terminal bud as it's called, the bud at the end of a branch. This particular branch right here, you notice that the terminal bud is way up right there, but small amount of growth around the terminal bud, and then all the other buds coming down through, the lateral buds, there's no growth. Why is that? The terminal bud is asking this plant to send all of its sap and nutrients up to it. It's restricting all of these buds from blooming. Now, if we want to break that dominance, and we want these buds to sprout, what we have to do is cut that terminal bud off. We're going to go ahead and make a heading back cut at this point. Heading back cut is to again take off the apical bud, the terminal bud, back to a node somewhere down the branch of your choosing. Now in this particular case we have nodes on both sides, okay, they're called opposite nodes. So what I'm going to do, if I want that branch to grow in both directions, I'm going to take this and I'm going to cut about a quarter of an inch above, straight across. Now what I have there, I didn't control what direction the growth is going to go. It's going to come in both directions. Continuing with the heading back cut discussion, this is another branch that I have. You can see the terminal bud right here. We wanted to get rid of the terminal bud, of course, because we want it to grow in particular directions. So now here, instead of having opposite nodes or buds, they have alternate nodes or buds, one beneath another on the opposite side beneath the other. So we want to make the cut above the one we want the direction of growth to be in. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to come right here just above that particular one, about a quarter of an inch, so that at a 45 degree angle, make my cut. And actually that's even a little bit too far away. And you see the top of this is about equal to the bud. We didn't get into the bud at all, so we didn't damage anything here. All of the energy of this branch is going to be shooting to this bud and the ones beneath it, and we'll get new growth going in that direction. Okay, right now what we're going to do is do a three cut. 
A three cut is when you're removing a larger limb. You don't want the limb to break off by just making a saw cut right here. If you do that, that's going to strip the bark all the way down. Now you have a, a, a limb that's going to die or be severely injured. So we're going to do what we call a three cut. The first cut we'll make on the underside of the limb. The second cut about an inch and a half out on the top side of the limb. And then the third cut, because all the, weights, all the weight of this limb has been removed, the third cut we can make right back here at the branch collar bark ridge area. And then we'll have a properly removed limb. So Bill's going to demonstrate right now how he's going to start that first cut. If you continue cutting further than about a third, the branch wants to flex down and you'll tie up your saw. Okay. It'll bind up and in there. And we're starting to do that on right. Me right there. Good. Now, how are you going to make your second cut, Bill? Well, my next cut will be about an inch and a half out. Okay. I'll, I'm going to stop you for a moment there, if I may. What's going to happen when you make that cut to this limb back here? Uh -huh. I'm going to run right into that limb, aren't I? That's exactly right. Yeah. This is why you, before you make your first cut, you always stand back and you look at the entire uh, process you're going to be doing, this entire limb. We don't just walk up and start cutting. So when, for you at home, when you're thinking about making a cut like this, make sure you stand back and look at your entire tree, your entire plant before you make that cut. So he made the first cut underneath, which is exactly good. Now, Bill, I'm going to suggest you go around the other side. Okay. Oh, yeah. Whole new picture here. All right. Now he's going to come out how far, Bill? About an inch and a half. Inch and a half to two inches. You're a little bit beyond that. Come a little bit closer, please. That looks so. That's pretty good. So now he's going to just barely clear that limb back there, but he will clear it. Now you notice that he's holding his saw pretty much uh, parallel to the first cut. She's starting to make its break right here. Notice the crack coming. Remember, here was his first cut. There you are. Perfect. Now, take a look at what happened here. He made his first cut about a third of the way through. Then he came around to the other side so as not to damage this limb, and he made his second cut. So when it, as the weight of the limb brought it down, it split from second cut back to the first. Now, what did that do? It kept the bark from stripping down this way, and if you made that cut all the way back like I described in the beginning, you would strip the bark down to a limb we don't want damaged. So now we can make our third cut of what they call the three cut process. Now you notice that all the weight has been taken off the limb with our first two cuts of the three cut process. Take a note, real careful note of where he has his saw blade. It's just outside the branch collar, right here. This is all the branch collar. This is your bark ridge coming down. So he wants to stay outside of that. He doesn't want to touch it at all. The reason being, again, because the healing enzymes are just inside that branch collar and you want them to rush to this place where we're making that cut. So he's going to start this cut now and he's going to come down at that angle and make, trying to keep from damaging the limb above. Remember, always look at your entire cut uh, area. He's going to try to keep from a saw doesn't damage this limb, just cut here. Now notice, once again, this was our first cut, our second cut, all the weight has been removed from this limb. Now he can safely make that third cut just outside the branch collar, which he'll finish up in a second, and that limb will come tumbling down to the ground. Okay, perfect. Bill just made this cut, but on the edge of this cut, you're going to see there's a little bit of a rough edge. Sometimes the rough edges are much larger than this. This happens to be small and it's containable. When you get a rough edge on that cut, you want to make sure that it gets trimmed off. You use a sharp knife for that. I have a particular type of knife. This is called a pruning knife, and it's designed exclusively for this. And what I'm going to do is take this knife and I'm going to trim that rough edge off. We want to get it off because since it's not smooth, that's another place where disease, insects, or something else can enter that limb and work its way down, destroying it. I want to point out that the blade on this is curved. So that allows you to come in and you get nice and tight on this and the blade is not going to slip off. Now take a look at what I'm doing. I'm just slowly trimming that rough edge back. That's all there is to it. This tool we're using is a pole pruner. Uh, this pole pruner has a fiberglass handle down here. It is an aluminum, aluminum handle up here. Uh, you do have to be a little careful with aluminum handles around wires, but uh, the pole down here 
is fiberglass, so it's very safe. This is the cutting mechanism at the top of the pole pruner. This is the pulley mechanism, so you can stand on the ground, pull, and it, uh, with this pulley mechanism up here, activates the cutting blade here, uh, so that it does the cutting remotely, so that that uh, allows you to cut from quite a distance. You do have to be careful, and it's a little more difficult to see uh, where you're cutting, of course, but uh, it does allow you to make cuts from a distance. Bill put the cutter out on this limb. We're taking this particular limb off because it's crossing with the other limb right here. You can see that. They're rubbing against one another, which again is going to open up a wound in this tree, allowing insects, disease, or something other nasty things to get in there. So we can't make a three cut as we just demonstrated before to remove the limb. So we're taking off little pieces of this limb as we go forward. He took off one branch, now he's going to take off a bigger piece, and then we'll probably switch over to the saw, take it off here, and then one more cut way back against the stem of the tree. So he's going to go ahead with the pole pruner now and make that cut. Yvonne's making another cut on the same limb that we're attempting to remove without stripping the bark down off the main trunk. So go ahead, Yvonne, and start making the cut with the saw blade. The first two times, the cuts we made we used with the actual pruning. <laughs> this one she made with the saw blade, because it was too large to use the pruning mechanism. Okay, Kim's going to be making the last and final cut on this limb. Hold up for one second, Kim. Notice that she's just outside, once again, of the branch collar, and so we won't damage it, and those healing enzymes can come racing in to heal, or seal this up really quickly. So she's going to make that last cut. Now there's not enough weight on this limb that's going to strip the bark back. This is what's so important why we took a number of cuts getting it all the way off. Absolutely perfect. We want to talk a little bit about hedge clipping or shrub clipping. And it's really important, not so much how you do it, well that's obviously important too, but the shape you leave your shrub in. So many people take a shrub like this, this holly right here, or others, uh, and they, they call what I call cheese balling it, where they make a completely round shrub. And what's happening, the bottom half of that, you're going to see start to thin out over the months and years. And why? It's because it's not getting adequate light, because it's shadowed from the parts above it. Look at this particular holly right now. You'll see, now it's got new growth, but you'll see how the shape comes down, and it doesn't tuck in where the foliage stops. It still is vertical. This is so important. This whole area now can get light. You see good healthy growth all the way down in here. This is critical to the, uh, to the health of your shrub. Do not cut it in a V shape from the top down or in a cheese ball shape, which neither one of those two bottom ends of those shrubs will get decent light. This is real important. Now we're not gonna clip this today. This was clipped several months ago. This is new growth uh, that's hardened off. We are coming into winter. I don't want this shrub damaged, so I won't prune this again now till spring. Let's come over here to this shrub. This shrub is pruned and pruned wrong in several ways. First of all, you notice that this tapers in from top to bottom. It tapers down at a very acute angle. So th these branches down here, these stems, are not going to get good light. Look how it begins to thin out. And that's because it's not getting effective light. This should be inverted. The top should be narrower than the bottom. In other words, I'm going to move my hand. If you had the top right here, the bottom should be about out to here. So it's going to gather all the sunlight, all the nutrients that this air and sun allow it to gather. It's very important that this gets reversed. Now, a major issue here is the top. It's cut flat. This should be mounded or peaked something other but flat is no good because what happens if you get a heavy snow it just lays on here and what happens then it pulls it apart and will break your your branches that are forming the structure of this shrub so once again not flat always mound it peak it or some other way to allow snow and other heavy things to fall off you notice once again this this shrub is shaped wider at the top narrower at the bottom and look as we come down it's still, it's gathering a lot of light because this still has availability to get sun. But as we come down further, she falls into shadow and look how thin these limbs are. These branches are really sparse and few branches to begin with. 
This is what occurs when it doesn't get enough sun. So please, once again, make sure you cut this from narrower at the top to wider at the bottom. This is exactly backwards. We're gonna trim this shrub here. Uh, and notice the shape of this. It tapers up to the peak. Now you're not gonna have a flat surface for snow to lie on and break it down. This doesn't exactly taper out, but it doesn't taper in. So it really doesn't have a bad shape. So before we get into cutting this, I'm gonna take just a little bit of Lysol and disinfect my very sharp blade. And now all we're going to do with the hand hedge clipper is take this and just take these tips off. We're not gonna go any deeper into that than this. And we're just gonna keep that same angle all the way up, keeping the blade flat to the shrub, to the angle of the shrub. And this is nothing more than that. Now, we'll just keep on going here for a second. When you get to the corners, try and keep your clipper vertical so you get a nice sharp edge, if that's what you want, or you can have a curved edge. And as we come down the front, this will be just like we're doing right here. Just like we did on the top. Nice, clean, crisp cuts with your piece of equipment. And uh, just keep on trimming like this all the way down. Another real important factor when you have a solid hedge like this, this type of shrub that creates a hedge, is the fact that it gets a lot of light on the inside. Now this one hasn't been pruned properly over the years regarding that aspect of pruning. Uh, so I just, I started beginning to cut some windows in here. Windows throughout that it's gonna allow air to get in, to allow sunlight to get in, and create a healthier plant, bug resistant, disease resistant. So all you have to do is take your pruner, and this has already been uh, sanitized with my Lysol, and choose a branch, go in, and you can make a thinning or a heading back cut to open this up. Now this is a thinning cut. And that's, oops. Now we have another area where sunlight's gonna enter, air is gonna enter, creating a much healthier environment for this plant. Windows should be cut all the way around. All right, we've, we've finished up two sides of this shrub right now as far as the hedge clipping goes. You notice I have nice edges tapering up to the top, a very small flat top on it, edges tapering down this way and a flat edge here. I can't really allow it to come out any further simply because it's gonna intrude on the sidewalk. So we're gonna keep this flat instead of somewhat uh, a Christmas tree form, we're gonna keep it flat straight down. That way it won't intrude on the sidewalk. At any rate, uh, this would be what your finished product should look like. We will be cutting a few more windows in here to give a little more light uh, and air flow. So that's pretty much what we're looking at. Very simple quality product. Um, use your Lysol or other disinfectant and just nice easy cuts. My lord, don't go one of these numbers. Just take your time and get yourself nice and even and whatever shape that you're going to train and form that plant into.